issue of whether or not uh, I could have assurance of salvation, and if I have it, what it even feels like. Well, and assurance of. To be honest with you, Sam. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Be honest. No, just because to be honest with you, Sam. You know, especially if we're struggling with sins and yeah. stuff like that. We uh, all a struggle. lot of the times it. It, it it hinders my ability to have the joy and the peace of knowing that I'm saved. Yes, this is an emotional struggle that Satan capitalizes on. So let me your your issue is not so much scriptural as it is psychological and emotional, because Satan is playing with your weakness. So I'm glad you asked me the question. Yes, the assurance of salvation is this: if you're acknowledging your sin and you're acknowledging your struggle and you don't justify it, even though you succumb to it. And you don't want to, but you do. And you're not justifying it. You're saying it's sin and I hate it. And you're crying out to the Lord. Jesus is a God of infinite mercy and love. He's more merciful than you can imagine. If you're clinging to him and you don't let go, he will preserve you and forgive you and transform you. The issue is... What does it mean? Say again. What does it mean to cling to him? Cling to him meaning you are acknowledging what he says about your situation. In other words... If you're struggling with homosexuality, let's say, I'm not saying you are. My cousin say cheese, he's, you know, there, you know, the jury's out on him. He's like kind of the way he laughs and he looks. I'm wondering if he struggles with homosexual proclivities, but that's my cousin. I'll have a private session with him. But you sound masculine. But let's say you're struggling with homosexual desires. Okay. You're admitting it's wrong. You're admitting it's sin. You're admitting it's evil. You acknowledge what Jesus says and you are resisting it. That's clinging to Christ, saying, Lord, I agree with you. This is wrong. I don't want to do it. Help me. And God shows you mercy. You understand? That's why even yes. David was called a man after God's heart. Let me explain why David was called a man after God's heart. If you go to Acts 13 and you read from 22 onwards, why was David the man after God's heart when he was a murderer and he was an adulterer and a womanizer? Not because God loved his sin. Because David acknowledged his sinfulness, didn't justify it, didn't double down. When he was confronted with sin, he broke before God and admitted, I am a sinner and I deserve to die. Because of that humble attitude, God forgave him. What God hates is people who cover their sin by trying to justify it, excuse it, and say it's okay, so that they can continue living that way. That's not you. From your agony, you're showing God you love him so much, it's hurting you and killing you that you can't overcome this specific sin, and you're ashamed, and you're fearing that God will reject you. No, that's the kind of heart that God loves. Someone who acknowledges, I'm broken, I'm sinful, I'm struggling, I know it's sin, I know you hate it, I don't want to do it, I'm weak. God has nothing but love and mercy if you acknowledge it. How do I how do I know that it's in God's uh, nature to not give up on me? How do I know that I haven't reached a point where God just says, "Enough with this guy. He's sinned very many easy. times. I've given too many chances." Very easy. If God had handed you over one sign, you could you would care less about God. You wouldn't care what the Bible says. You wouldn't care what Jesus has to say, and you wouldn't care about the Bible. You would hate the Bible and Jesus and rebel and now fight Jesus and his words like many atheists do. That's how you know he hasn't given up on you. One sign that God gives up on you because he's tired with you is he hands you over to your desires. That's Romans 1. I'm just going to give you the verses and you guys can go read them later. Romans 1, 24, right? Romans 1, 24 to 32, okay? It says, when a person has let, reached a level of depravity and continues to willfully indulge in that depravity and justifies it, God hands you over, then your conscience becomes so seared you could care less anymore. And that's also 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 12. That's how you know God has handed you over when you don't care about God, don't care about calling it sin. You actually relish in it. You love it. You justify it. And now you attack God and his Bible and try to destroy the faith of Christians. That's how you know you've reached that point. And another way I know that God hasn't given up on you, because Jesus told Simon Peter, are you ready for this? Yes. In Matthew 18, 21 to 35, you got to read the entirety because Jesus gives a parable. 
Matthew 18, 21 to 35, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I sin? I mean, how many times should I forgive my brother, right? If he sins against me, seven times? Jesus says, I tell you, 70 times seven. Forgive him 490 times a day if he acknowledges he's sinning and he turns to you. Now, if Jesus is telling me to open the door to forgive my brother who sins against me and acknowledges he sinned against me and he regrets it and never closed the door, how much more Jesus, whose heart, whose love is infinitely more than mine, how much more will the door of forgiveness be open for you when it comes to Jesus? So God is, is it good? I, I wonder for the people who do fall away, is it is it a decision that they make or is it God maybe pulling away from them? No, it's a decision you make. You turn from God because you don't trust God and take it at his word. So then God honors your decision and hands you over and I'll prove it to you. Again, I'm going to give you scripture. In John 6, if you read from 60 to 66. There were a group of disciples that were following Jesus. John 6, 60 to 66. When Jesus says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, they started complaining. This is a hard saying. Who can accept it? Then Jesus exposed why they were complaining because he knew that they didn't really believe from their heart. It says in John 6, 64, he knew they didn't really, really believe from their heart. So he knew because their faith wasn't genuine, they're going to fall away. And then that's why he says in John 6, 65, for this reason, I said, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. And then 66 says, at this, they left him never to walk with him again. And Jesus allowed them to leave. He didn't throw them out. They left and he honored their decision. You see? Got it. Yes. But one thing I want to tell you how Satan, what Satan does. When you say, how do I feel it? The Bible says you got to reach a point in your life that you can't base it on your feelings. You have to base it on God's word and his character. Let me explain what I mean. Proverbs 28, 26 says, a fool trusts in his own heart, in your own thinking, your own feelings. Your feelings are corrupted, tainted because of your sinful desires, because of your upbringing, because of society and Satan. Your emotions will mislead you. And Satan knows that. So Satan will play on your emotions to make you feel so guilty, so dirty, unworthy, that you're ashamed to face God and turn away because you're too embarrassed because you don't think you're good enough. And then by keeping you away, then what happens is the more you keep yourself away from God, the more you die to God, the more you don't care. And then you reach a point, you give up. Are you with me there? Yes. Oh, okay, now, this is Satan playing on your mind, but this is why Jesus is telling you, you can't go by how you feel. You have to take me by my word. Trust me. I am the way, the truth, and life. I cannot lie. So if I tell you, if you are broken over your sin and you acknowledge it's sin and you don't want to sin because you love me and you hate when you sin against me, even though you fall, you acknowledge it, trust me. I won't give up on you. I'll forgive you. But Satan plays on your mind to make you feel too guilty, right? Too guilty so that you now start doubting Jesus and trusting your emotions, which is what Satan wants to do. So Jesus is telling you, will you take me at my word and trust me that when I tell you this is who I am, and the door of forgiveness will always be open if you acknowledge you're sinning and you're broken before me because I will never leave nor forsake you. I'll never abandon you because I love you more than you know. And if you confess, like 1 John 1, 7 to 10 says, I will forgive you. Will you believe me? Or are you going to trust your emotions that are being manipulated by Satan to distrust me because that's what he wants to make you feel so guilty you no longer trust in the Lord so he can destroy you. So what are you going to do? Are you going to trust Jesus or your emotions? I'm going to trust Jesus. So stop going by your emotions. This is why marriages fail. Now, let me tie it in with marriage. Because Jesus says he's our husband. We're his bride, right? Right. You know why marriages fail? One big reason. Because why? people emotionally check out. Those butterflies in the stomach they had when they first dated, it's gone. 
So because they don't get any emotional stimulus from their partner, then they think the relationship is not worth pursuing. So they leave for someone else that causes them to have butterflies in their stomach. And this is why they go from one marriage to another or one relationship to another, because they haven't learned that love is not just emotion. It's a commitment to do what is right in the sight of God and do what is beneficial for the other. In other words, love is action, not just feeling. And if you don't train yourself to get to the point that love is not just how I feel, love is something I do to show my devotion to the person, whether I feel like it or not. It's like work. There are days when you get up, you don't feel like working, but you still go to work because you know if you don't work, you're going to lose your job and be homeless, right? Yes. How much more relationships? So Jesus is saying, you may not have those butterflies in your stomach for me. That doesn't matter. You have to go beyond feeling and still pursue me, trust me, and do what I tell you because I know what's best for you.